Hello, thanks for tuning in. Before I get started, if you want a copy of these slides, you can use this QR code or URL. I'm Jamie Oakes, and today I'm going to be talking about a project that's been on my mind for about 10 years. And over the last three years, uh, Perry Wood, a postdoc in my lab, and I, we finally brought it to fruition and have shiny new results that I'm super excited to share with you all. So let's dive in. We're going to start with an assumption that we make in phylogenetics. And that assumption is that all processes of diversification affect lineages independently. So what I mean by that is if we look at this ancestral species of lizard here, whatever process causes it to diverge at this point, we assume has no effect on any of the other lineages across the tree. Okay, there's lots of reasons why that, might, that assumption might be violated. So let's look at a cute little example here of three lizards co-occurring on this island. Let's imagine sea levels go up, fragment the island and cause all three species to diverge. That's clearly violating the assumption that divergences, divergences are independent across the tree. Um, this is lizards on trees, which I think is fantastic, but this could also be three individuals bringing different lineages of a virus to a social gathering uh, that would generate similar patterns of divergence. This could be three different uh, members of a gene family on a segment of a chromosome that gets duplicated that's gonna generate the same, same sort of pattern of shared divergences across the tree. Okay, so lots of interesting processes across the life sciences that you know, generate this pattern of shared divergences across the tree. Our current methods assume this can't happen, so we're limited on our ability to study these processes. So that's the goal here, is to incorporate shared divergences into phylogenetic inference so that we can actually test the patterns that are predicted by these processes that, um, of co-diversification. All right, so how are we gonna do that? Well, we took an approach of generalizing the space of trees that is considered during phylogenetic inference. So if we have four tips, here are the trees that we currently consider, right? They all have three independent bifurcating divergences, but there are other trees out there that have fewer divergences. Right, there's all of these with two that allow for shared divergences and multifurcation, and we can only go all the way down to one. So we don't have to restrict ourselves to the you know, strictly bifurcating um, independent divergences. We want to allow all of these other trees onto the playing field um, so that we can accommodate shared divergences during phylogenetic inference. Okay, to do that, we have to create a distribution across all of these trees. To do that, we assumed they were all equally probable. Uh, we put a parametric distribution on the age of the root and used scaled beta distributions for all the other divergences. That's the gen it's glossing over some details here, but that's the general idea of, of putting a distribution on this expanded uh, space of trees. All right, so we got a distribution. How are we gonna do inference? We took a Bayesian approach and we used reversible jump Markov chain Monte Carlo to explore this um, expanded space of phylogenies that differ in the number of divergence times. Um, I'll gloss over the details here, but I will show you that it's working. We did lots of validation tests. Here's one with um, a tree with seven tips. And if our algorithms are working correctly, each, uh, the number of times each topology is sampled should follow a binomial distribution, um, which it is. So it looks like our algorithms are working correctly. <clears throat> we implemented this new tree model, this new generalized tree model in the software package EcoEvality, and the new tool is called FICOEvil. Um, and we coupled this uh, tree model with a multi-species coalescent likelihood model that analytically integrates over genealogies and character histories along those genealogies. Um, what I want to make clear here is this tree model is actually agnostic to the likelihood model. So it could be coupled with any phylogenetic likelihood model. We just use the multi-species coalescent model here because our goal is to infer um, species trees with shared divergence times from genomic data. All right, so let's do some simulations and see if this works. So we simulated 100 data sets on each of these two trees. Um, each data set has 50,000 characters and we're assuming a strict clock. So we have a tree that has um, shared divergences and multifurcations, and one that has only independent bifurcating divergences. 
We analyze all these data sets with our new approach, the generalized tree distribution, and an otherwise equivalent model that assumes independent bifurcating divergences. We also simulated uh, uh, data sets on trees that are randomly drawn from these distributions. So we randomly draw the topology and divergence times and then simulate a data set on them. All right. So here's uh, we, uh, the tree that we simulated 100 data sets on that has shared divergences and multiplication. And let's see how we did. This is showing you the um, histograms of the posterior probabilities of correctly inferring these shared divergence times. It looks very good. We're you know, getting very high posterior probabilities and correctly, um, correctly inferring um, that those shared divergence times. And the same is true for these multifurcations. So that looks good. Um, let's look at these same data sets. So I'm just moving the same tree over to the left and just look at the distance from the true tree, okay? And this is just showing us that our new approach is um, significantly closer to the true tree um, than, than assuming independent bifurcating divergences. So when there are shared divergences, the new approach seems to be working well and doing significantly better than um, sort of the current standard of a, um, assuming independent bifurcating divergences. That's great, but what if there aren't any shared divergences? What if they're all independent and bifurcating? Is there a cost to the new approach? Well, it doesn't look like uh, there's much of a cost here. So when we simulated data sets on this tree, both approaches um, almost always inferred the correct topology with high posterior probability. <clears throat> and if we look at distances from the truth, they're indistinguishable, right? So there doesn't seem to be a cost of using this new approach even if um, there aren't any shared divergences. Okay, so what if we draw um, the tree and the diver divergence times randomly from the generalized tree distribution? Well, we estimate tree length very well um, and we get the expected coverage of our 95% confidence interval. Um, and when there are shared divergences, we generally infer them correctly and with high posterior probability. So that looks um, good. One surprising result is that we actually got better MCMC convergence and mixing with the new, with the new uh, generalized tree model. Um, I was sort of really scared that if we would get the opposite, but it was a pleasant surprise that we were actually getting better convergence and mixing. All right, so an empirical application. Here's Southeast Asia today. Here's what it looked like during glacial periods. Um, so there's been a lot of, over the past four to five million years, there's been a lot of island fragmentation. Did this promote um, diversification? Well, if it did, we should expect to see a lot of shared divergence times because uh, when these islands were fragmented, we should see spe uh, speciation events. All right, so to assess that, um, great collaborators Cam Seiler and Rafe Brown had samples of bent toed geckos and, and a genus gecko sampled from across the Philippine Islands. So we collected rad seek data from them and applied the new approach. And this is what we found. So here's the bent-toed geckos. Over the last 5 million years, we found support, uh, some of it weak, some of it strong, for um, six shared divergence events or, and or multifurcations within the last 5 million years. So that's during the period that we're interested in when the glacial cycles were occurring. So that, that is interesting to see. Um, the genus gecko, we see about the same thing. So uh, six shared divergence times and or multifurcations. Um, and most of them are within the last five million years. So that seems to support the predictions of the, ma of the hypothesis that these, this island fragmentation could be um, driving diversification in these groups. Okay, so take home points very quickly. The new approach seems to infer phylogenies with shared divergences quite well, even with moderate sized data sets. And there doesn't seem to be much of a cost to using it um, got a good MCMC mixing um, and convergence and doesn't, um, uh, does well even if there aren't shared divergences. And when we applied it to the uh, Philippine Gaikonans, we find so, uh, support for shared divergences as predicted by sea level changes. This is just scratching the surface. There's so much to do here. So if you're interested in this, just let me know. Um, everything is available. Um, uh, the release is coming soon, but it's all in the development branch. Um, all the open science notebooks and the preprint is coming soon. Got to say thanks to my lab group. They're fantastic and great collaborators. Um, and if you have any questions, please email me. All right. Thank you very much.